Welcome. In this video presentation, I will try to discuss about the most important biochemical concepts behind homocystinuria, typical types, common manifestations, lab findings, and some case discussions of homocystinuria. So, homocystinuria is a disease or is a spectrum of disease that occurs when there is an increased level of homocysteine in your blood. So, normally, homocysteine is metabolized by two important enzymes and one enzyme is called cystathionine synthase which ultimately helps conversion of homocysteine to cysteine another important enzyme is called homocysteine methyl transferase which helps the conversion of homocysteine to methionine so let's first talk about the cystathionine beta synthase so <coughs> homocysteine actually uh, combines with serine and forms cystathionine which is later converted to cysteine, which is an amino acid. And the conversion of homocysteine and serine to cystathione is, uh, in this reaction, the, there is also a cofactor, which is called vitamin B6 or pyridoxal phosphate. And in, on the left side, can, as you can see, the important enzyme is called homocysteine methyltransferase. And the cofactor is vitamin B12. So B12 or methylcobalamin actually donates a methyl group to homocysteine which helps the conversion of homocysteine to methionine. So let's talk about the diseases. So there are actually three types of homocysteineuria that can occur. So all of those are autosomal recessive like other enzyme deficiencies. Most important and the most common one is a deficiency of cystathionine synthase. So let's talk about it. So whenever there is a deficiency of cystathionine synthase, what you have now? As the cystathionine synthase is deficient, the cysteine formation is not occurring or is decreased. So there is a decreased level of cysteine. And the homocysteine, as it cannot go in this pathway, homocysteine starts to build up. And homocysteine actually starts to form increased level of methionine. So what you can do in those patients is, first of all, we have to supplement those patients with cysteine. Cysteine becomes an uh, essential amino acid in this kind of diseases. And what else? As we have an increased level of homocysteine in blood, we want to decrease the level of homocysteine in blood. And the way we can do that is we can actually stimulate or induce this uh, reaction. And the uh, induction of this reaction can be uh, achieved by increasing the level of vitamin B12 so we can supplement the patient with <coughs> vitamin B12 and <coughs> decreasing the uh, dietary consumption of methionine so if the methionine level drops the, the reaction will go in this way so you have to decrease the level of methionine in the diet so as you can see here the treatment for cystathionine synthase deficiency is decreasing the dietary methionine increasing or supplementing the, supplementing the patient with cysteine now which becomes an essential amino acid giving B12 and also folate to help the conversion of homocysteine to methionine to reduce the homocysteineuria. And another cause of <coughs> homocysteineuria is decreased affinity of cystathionine synthase for pyroxyl phosphate. So it's kind of like a cystathionine synthase deficiency but those patients are actually less uh, less severe than a complete deficiency of cystathionine synthase. So if there is deficiency of B6 those reactions will be slowed down so ultimately cysteine level will go go down and that's why what you have to do we just have to supplement the patient with vitamin b6 or pyridoxal phosphate and we have to also supplement the patient with cysteine because the cysteine levels are still low another less common cause of homocysteineuria is deficiency of homocysteine methyl transferase so if there is deficiency of homocysteine methyl transferase, now the methionine level will go down. And what you can do now, we have to actually supplement the patient with methionine. Um, the lab findings of homocysteineuria are very easy to remember because as there is a decreased activity of enzymes, the homocysteine level in serum will increase and it will lead to increased level of homocysteine in the urine, which is actually the homocysteineuria. And the methionine level commonly increases in whenever you have a deficiency of cystathionine synthase or deficiency of vitamin B6. But in case of homocysteine methyltransferase deficiency, methionine level is actually drops. 
Clinical features are intellectual disability due to increased serum level of homocysteine. It can lead to osteoporosis and importantly, it can lead to marfanoid habitats like long fingers, kyphosis and lens sub subluxation, which is downward and inward. In case of Marfan syndrome, the lens subluxation is upward and sometimes laterally. And most importantly, those patients with homocysteinuria can develop some vascular complications like thrombosis, atherosclerosis, leading to stroke, MI, or renal vein thrombosis in a very early age. Here you can see a patient. So here you can see there is downward and inward subluxation of the lens. So here is the lens which is subluxed here, uh, downward and inward. We have a practice problem. A five-year-old boy with developmental delay is brought to the physician due to frequent squinting. He is diagnosed with bilateral lens subluxation. Four years later, he dies of a massive stroke. Autopsy shows middle cerebral artery thrombosis and old renal infarcts. This patient's disease course could have most likely been improved by supplementing his diet with which of the following nutrients. So the answer is vitamin B6. Uh, so this case might be a case of deficiency of vitamin B6. Uh, that's why if we supplement this patient with vitamin B6, it can improve the patient's outcome. And even in cases with cystathionine synthesis deficiency, vitamin B6 supplementation actually improves the patient outcome. We have another problem. A 8-year-old Caucasian male experiencing severe chest pain is diagnosed with acute myocardial infarction. Laboratory workup reveals an increased ceramethionine level. Now, which of the following amino acid is most likely essential in this patient? Now, this is also a case of homocysteinuria because as you can see, this patient is having an early MI, early age MI and also increased ceramethionine level. So most likely this patient has deficiency of cystathionine synthase or a deficiency of vitamin B6. So the most important treatment in this patient would be supplementation with cysteine because as you have a deficiency of cystathionine synthase or B6, cysteine cannot be formed well. So now it becomes an essential amino acid. We have another problem here. So recent studies suggested that increased serum levels of homocysteine may predispose to thrombosis and decreasing one's homocysteine level may benefit patients at risk of coronary or cerebral artery thrombosis. Folic acid and vitamin B12 supplementation can increase serum homocysteine levels can decrease serum homocysteine levels according to the following mechanism. So what should be in this place? So what is this what? So I think this should be very easy for you. Here you can see the homocysteine and here you can see the methylcobalamin which is the vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 helps the conversion of homocysteine to methionine. Yeah, absolutely. So vitamin B12 actually gives his, its methyl to homocysteine and now homocysteine methyl transferase can act on homocysteine and converts it to methionine. So the portion will be methionine. So, so that's all from me today. Thanks all for watching my video.